hi it's Karen from Quade. Um, I just wanted to put a quick video out. What if Quade could help you have your voice heard and your children's voices heard pre-election time? My daughter was diagnosed with ASD in 2014, just before her 13th birthday. The school were absolutely clueless. She'd gone to a teacher for help and was told to go away. So she took it literally and she did go away, leaving the school premises and refused to get in the headmaster's car when he went to try and find her. So she was excluded for not following his instructions. I work with families fighting the system in order to secure the support needed by their children has taught me that the time for excuses is over. Too often the adoption in school of masking strategies by children on the autism spectrum results in them being denied the diagnosis and support they need. Too often these children then melt down at home, affecting their families, their siblings, and themselves. That was 2014. Um, my daughter almost had a breakdown. I have regretted ever since moving north of the border. My daughter, the last four years in Scottish education, is now traumatised. Between Unlawful exclusions, internal exclusions, seclusion and isolation, and police investigations for assault. My son has complex needs which are fully documented. However, despite his educators being fully informed of said needs, his schools preferred to say that he didn't have needs and that I was lying and he was lying. Certain educators influenced other professionals to deny support my son needed. He had a break. According to educators, they are not responsible for this trauma and were quite happy to harass and accuse me of somehow inventing my son's needs. So many of us are harassed, undermined, gaslighted and denied appropriate support. I'm electively home educating, which is not true. Blatantly breaking the law, um, blatantly breaking statutory guidelines. Um, I've complained to omnibusmen, I've complained to ICO, and you always get the same response. They always justify the professional's actions. Um, I've had things where meetings haven't been documented. Um, in fact, to the point that they said the meeting didn't take place, and then I've had to go and get everyone who attended the meeting to actually write to verify the meeting took place. This is like constant battles. Social services stepped in and decided that I was at one time an unfit mum, saying that I emotionally and physically abused my boy, yet couldn't tell anybody how I physically or emotionally abused him. This bullying from them went on for three years. It wasn't just against myself, it was against my family. 
And when we actually got to set a date for a court trial, they decided to drop their false accusations when an independent social worker and an independent doctor from Great Ormond Street decided that home was the best place for my son. When I grew up in the education system, I, uh, from five years old after a, no, sorry, four years old after a diagnosis, it became impossible to um, develop evenly without having uh, sort of tripping up and trying to learn skills myself, uh, pretty much uh, isolated from the community. So currently, the United Kingdom is went from 11th position out of 165 countries to 156 out of 165 countries. This is because the United Kingdom are failing children, are failing vulnerable people, uh, the disabled, etc, etc, etc. And so this means that all those who were due support or all those who've had support have had it removed illegally removed how on earth can you expect children to sit exams and do gcses when they've been traumatized by professionals where they have got no trust in teachers you can't why aren't more parents of special needs children standing together that's what I want to know. Why aren't we all standing together as one, with one voice? If we all stand together with one voice, guess what? We can change things. We can change the system. We can change the lives of all of our children if we act together.